Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're building out what I think is going to be a pretty good build. Uh, this is the second version of the Zoom 75. It was sent out to me by Mellatrix. Um, all opinions are my own, but we're going to go ahead and build it, review it, and see what it sounds like. And then we'll come back and revisit it with some mods and see how good we can make the sound this this from the sound test that i've heard this seems to lend itself to many different types of sound profiles depending on the mods the switches and the keycaps and as opposed to sounding very similar with different mods and just uh, just changing tones this one really does seem to be a multi tone able kit Let's go ahead and see what we got in the box. Now, first off, I gotta say, this is a gorgeous bot. All right, so we are doing a milk tea build. We've got some flat ribbon cables, and I wanna guess one for the PCB and one for the knob kit. Here is what I think is going to be the weight. And there we have the anodized uh, gold. Wait. As with the Zoom 65, which I did um, last month, we have an inspection card uh, or quality control, basically showing us that this was um, checked at by checked off by an individual, a QC individual, and that's where the numbers come in. So. Um, you know, install internal weight, they didn't do that. Install external weight, they didn't do that. So that's something that I would have to do. But all the rest of the things basically says what they did and inspection of the material itself, um, which is always, you know, nice. Especially, I mean, this is what a custom experience is about. Or part of it. <laughs> all right, we got a contest to post and win. Very cool. FAQ card and just gives us some cautions you know to be uh, careful of how to connect with Bluetooth how to use the LCD screen and how to remap keys and flash the software and then we have our manual that basically goes over all the different um, pieces that we have here and we have our build instructions which I will I may have to refer to these as we go along and we also have um, operating instructions it's a nice long list of the pre-programmed via uh, configuration options I love that they provide all of that I think that the more information that you have about the product the more that you're likely going to appreciate aspects of the product so here is where the core of it's going to be inside of this lovely it feels almost like velvet um, but i'm sure it's not it's really nice i like the feel of velvet so we go ahead and open this up and see about the rest and here we're going to have the stabilizers um same stabilizers that came with the uh 65 it's really these are really nice i i am um, they had sent me a sample uh huh, maybe at the beginning of this year of of their stabilizers and they just they just work <laughs> and they just uh um with other stabilizers i mean there's good stabilizers out there but i'll screw them in and then it's like oh wait a minute this one's got to be loose this one's got to be tight they they can still be a little fiddly i mean you always get them to work but these always seem to work on the first screw. So, and we have one of the USB A to USB C nylon braided cable with a nice coil on it, and it's nice and sturdy. So, in one envelope, we have our 2250 milliamp hour battery. We'll set that aside, and then we have another 2250 milliamp hour battery. All right, 
So we got some hardware here, a couple of Allen wrenches, as well as some screws, probably case screws there. Then we have we have some standoffs and some screws, perhaps for the plate and the PCB. And then we have some other little screws. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go along. And in here we have the gaskets. I do believe these are the feet, if I'm not mistaken. At the bottom of the case. Oh, this is like a little <laughs> like a little folder almost. That's actually pretty neat. Alright, so here we have all the foams. And it's even they're even labeled. Poron PCB foam. Poron switch foam. Poron plate foam. And the Poron dampener. Poron dampener. That's actually really uh, very, very well done. I like it. And here we have the PCB. And it came with the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. And here we have the PCB. We have two connectors for the two batteries. I'm going to guess that goes to the daughter board. And that's going to go to the uh, either the knob or the screen. Uh, whichever you're using in that 2U spot. And we see... Those are the tiniest LEDs. See on this side, they're just a tiny little window, but they're actually quite bright if they're anything like the, uh, the Zoom 65. And this cluster right here <laughs> gives you a lot of different options, including the split space, ISO, you can do the split left shift, um, you can do step caps locks, uh, you can do split space bar or 7U space bar as well. So a lot of layout options. That's always a good thing, and especially being hot swap. Because, I mean, there's most PCB boards will have plenty of options, but you got to side of them. But I'm seeing hot swap become a lot more um, available in the custom keyboard field. So, yeah, this is a, a lovely PCB, which we're going to carefully set aside because we'll be at, going at it here in just a little bit. And here we have the polycarbonate plate. Nice PC plate, and it looks like it's already ready for all the different combinations that you can do on the uh, PCB, which is nice. And I do like this is so far one of my favorite gasket implementations because instead of um, because instead of putting on individual gaskets on each of the plastic pieces and having them fall out here and there, you can just put these on. And they're just gonna stay real nice so and we'll finish that up when we get to that point now for the pest yes the resistance ah uh, yes here we are this is the milk tea color the off-white the retro it gives me gives me lovely retro vibes all right I don't see any damage on it whatsoever. It looks lovely. And then below we have oh, those plastic things for the feet. We have a lovely glass finish. Yeah, it's real nice. Real nice indeed. That's what this note says. So we did. We inspected it and it looks good. All right, so first things first, we're gonna build out the stabilizers. Here we have the screws as well as the washers. And uh, this is, yep, this is like the other one, which it is. It has the 7U, so if you're gonna do the 7U um, space bar, you've got a wire in there for it. And you've also got an extra, hmm, is that a three year or two and a half U wire? Not sure. You also have a bigger, smaller wire. <laughs> so yeah, one thing about these is that they have a different mounting system. It's like they almost come in from the back on the stabilizers. 
So, yeah, they're completely dry, so I may as well go ahead and lubricate them because they are bone dry. A little goes a long way. So yeah, these stems, this is our newer version. They have a, um, I would guess like a TPU plastic, but it's a rubberized plastic. It's soft. So that's definitely going to help to prevent any kind of tapping when it hits down and even right there. Huh. All right, so we've got the stabilizers um, ready to go. There we go. All right, so it's time to load up some switches, and today we're going to be going with some Dami Key Deep Sea. These have a nylon housing, a palm stem. It's a linear switch with a two-stage 22 millimeter spring. It has an operating force of 42 grams and a bottom out force of 52 grams with a total travel of 3.6 millimeters and they come hand lubed. These are courtesy KP Republic. So I'm gonna go ahead and load these up then we can get the gaskets going and move on to the next stage of the keyboard. side ones we want to use the shorter ones and the rest are going to be for the top and the bottom. All right now that we've got the switches loaded up and the gaskets as well it's time to start with the case. First we're going to go ahead and open it up so let's go ahead and take the case screws off. They all look to be the same height for the front and the back, so no worry about mixing those. I'm going to gently flip this over and pull the top case off. We'll be coming back to this in just a minute, but first thing is first. This is double-sided tape to hold the batteries down in place. So, let me see, do we need to put the weight on first? All right, so before we do the batteries, it wants us to do the weight. All right, so as with the Zoom 65, we have the screws for the weight already in the weight. So, and that's gonna go right there. So let's go ahead and get I like to keep the ones that I'm working with right out front so I don't have to go hunting for them anymore. So let's go ahead and remove the screws for the weight. All right, so we want to take this, align it the proper way. Go ahead and flip it over. back in. Alright, once we've done that, when I get the batteries, it looks like we're going to want to put them like this, so that this cable is routed out this way and it's not like being crimped underneath so one will be showing its label and one will not and then we want to peel the backing off and we want to 
to make sure to get the batteries without crimp crimping that wire. One battery. Two battery. All right. All right, so now we have the badge for the key and the knob. Looks like we already got the screws in there. There we go. All right, so the way we're doing this is we put that badge on and screw it in. That what we want to do this is going to go right here, but we want to go ahead and connect. Now it goes this way. We're going to want to go ahead and connect the ribbon cable first, as it'll make it easier when it's out of the case. All right. So what we want to do here is gently lift up on the black part. That basically is the lock mechanism. We want to insert it with the blue facing up as the pins are down below. All right. You'll feel it go in. That means it's lined up and then you press this down and it should hold it in place and it should be nice and straight. Now be careful not to push down too hard as there's some stabilize or some soldered points right there that could puncture this very, very delicate wire. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Make sure it's in. Press down and make sure it's locked. All right. So, it looks like there's a twist. And now, what we're going to want to do is attach it to the bottom of the case. So, this is going to be something that you're going to want to take into consideration when you disassemble that this is going to be attached to the case. So since we're going to go ahead and do this, we're going to do this all in one fell swoop. We put these aside for the moment. We want to go ahead, get as much space as possible. Go into the daughter board connector. Now we want to plug in each of the batteries. One battery, nope, and it's on. I got another battery. We're putting it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and be building it the first time with all of the uh, foams included. Probably should have done these afterwards. So let me go ahead and disconnect. Thankfully, we've got good JST connectors here. Now we can go ahead and <laughs> redo this part. Connect the daughter board. Gonna have to do a little bit of gymnastics here to get this in place. That's how it's gonna sit, but we need to go ahead and get that screwed in so it doesn't just flop around. Actually, there we go, that's how we do this. We'd stand this up here like that. All right, I guess I could have done that the first time around. Now we can go ahead and put this in. The only piece left is this, and this goes underneath everything here. Basically covering up the batteries. All right. Now we want to make sure we're not pinching any cables going all the way around, making sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And now we can go ahead and get the top and line it up. Let me flip it over. I'm going to make sure to hold it in place. Drop in the corner screws. Now 
go with the feet. I'm just going to go ahead and use the black ones for right now. And, ah, these are, our feet should be done. I really like these. Just pop into place. All right, so here we are with it loaded up. Let's see if we can get a good, light, good look at the RGBs before we uh, put some caps on it. And there's a look at the lights. They're nice and bright. Um, PC pleat helps diffuse that light some. It looks really nice. Um, and these aren't necessarily RGB switches, but we still got good light coming on through. For under $30, I was able to purchase from both Drop with a discount and on eBay, the set of Alphas and the Micon pack for the Mito and the Mito Drop canvas xda set so i'm really fond of this uh this set i wish i would have found the uh, base set but i like i said for under 30 dollars, i was able to get both of these so if the base set comes along at some other point i may pick it up but so for this one because of the milk tea i think canvas is going to look pretty good on here so let's go ahead and load these up and see what it looks like So here we are with the three mode version of the Zoom 75 uh, with the knob kit installed. I'm uh, running a XDA canvas on here. Uh, they're a nice um, flat profile. I think it fits. I may keep these on here. I may not, but um, it's, a, it's just a lovely kit. As far as this keyboard goes, now granted you're going to be it's going to be a little bit more on the, you know, patience end as far as building. Some people just want to pull the keyboard out and use it. But myself, I love building it. I love putting the pieces together. It feels more custom to me where like it's, you know, it, 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 like this has been designed for me. I mean, yes, you know, you get to pick the parts, you get to pick the colors, but then you get to build it. So, you know, a little bit of your blood, sweat, and tears are going into this. So it just gives it a little bit more value. I mean, obviously not value. Um, well, I mean, depends on how you look at value, but monetarily or just intrinsic value because you've built it yourself it came with pieces you pick the pieces out you built it you know you know exactly where everything goes how everything fits um, if there's an issue you're way more likely to know how to fix it you know if like one of the stabilizers is off you're gonna know where to get to it how to un you know take it apart put it back together lube it up delivering great products I mean the, from their switches to the keyboards that I've tested so far from them I've got nothing but praise. They're well built and they're priced very well. For everything that they offer, I think the price comes in at a, it's reasonable. Though, I mean, the market is getting better. There are some amazing pre-builts that are out or coming out that are definitely gonna give, you know, some of these more custom uh, keyboards a run for their money, but I don't think they're, they're gonna replace them. They're just gonna fit a niche where more people you know, will be able to access closer to fully custom keyboards. And I mean, to me, honestly, it, 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 the mis uh, to me, it's a misnomer, custom keyboard, because if it's something that, especially if it's a bare bone kit and you switch out the stabilizers, put in your own switches, your own keycaps, well, that's custom to you. So, you know, where is the line between that's not custom and this is custom? Anything you customize, even, you know, throwing an artisan keycap on there. Well, that's, you know, customized by you. So, but that's just, that's just language. So, um, I'm not going to sit and try to argue anyone over their, <laughs> their preference as to, you know, what's best or what's not, or what's custom and what's not custom. I just know that I enjoy this hobby for what it is. 
I enjoy, you know, thinking, all right, that's the base. Now, what switches should I use? Should I use this foam? Should I use that mod? Should I use this keycap set? How will it look? Should I make some keycap sets? It's almost endless. And I mean, many of us know because we are currently in the rabbit hole and we're continuing to dig. So um, for what this offers, I I think it's a great uh, value. Um, putting it together, the instructions are very clear. Um, let me walk you through everything that you need to do it comes with plenty of foam for those who want foam but you know you also have the choice to get rid of it even with the foam though we have plenty of flex plenty for me i know some people like a trampoline this this is just enough for me though i am going to come back to both this and the 65 the zoom 65 and do mods on them i do think they sound somewhat familiar but they're they're build present or they're the build process is very similar, so it you know it's not surprising that they sound similar. Now, granted, I'm working with the V2 versions of both. I did not see the um, the V1s or the first versions, but I have read that they have improved significantly. Um, to uh, they've improved significantly from the V1 versions, and I can definitely say from the, what I've read, yes, they, it does appear that they've improved significantly. I. It would be nice if I had a version one of each to kind of compare side by side. But um, with the Zoom 75, you also have the option for the LED screen. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of one so that I can show you guys switching it out and see what it's like. Because I do know that it has, because this is a, a VIA uh, a programmable keyboard, it does have, I think, I believe... CPU temp and maybe processing. I mean, I think you can actually plug in some values from your computer in here, but don't quote me on that. I don't have it, so I can't say for sure. And it may only be Windows only, so I'm a Linux guy. Don't know if that'll apply, but I'd love to see if and what, what we can do to that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test of the Zoom 75 V2. Uh, remember, I've got the Dami Key Deep C linear switches in there with the XDA Mito and Drop Canvas um, keycap set with um, the Micons and the Alphas. So I was I was kind of worried I was going to be short a couple of Micons, but nope, just enough for a 75. I wouldn't be able to do a T... Well, I guess I might actually be able to do a TKL. Hmm. But anyway, I like it on here. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test. If you guys have anything that you'd like for me to cover when I come back to mod it, because I'm going to come back and mod it, I'm going to do the pet mod on here. And I'm also going to throw, well, I'm going to throw two, two layers of pet mod, one below, one above. And I may replace the uh, back foam with Tempest tape and see how it goes. But if you guys want to see any mods, want to see me do anything specific when I do come back to this keyboard, leave your comments down below i do my best to answer as many comments as possible and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on